Hey everyone, it's Tori, and can you believe the holidays are so quickly approaching? I can't believe Thanksgiving is less than two weeks away. But today, what I wanted to talk to you about is an easy DIY project that you can give as gifts to pretty much anyone in your family and friends circle. Number one, it takes materials that you probably already have around the house, so that's a plus. Number two, it does not require you to have any major sewing skills. There's a little sewing involved, but if you have a sewing machine, you can use one, but you can also use your hand. Super simple, it doesn't have to be perfect. And number three, you can customize it so that you can give it to pretty much anyone for different reasons. And what I'm talking about today is this little cutie right here. I use them as fabric weights, but also this one I created as more of an ornament. Um, I have it scented in here. Uh, you can also use them for a number of things, a paperweight or just maybe a scented satchel around the house. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to make something like this. I have another version right here that I, again, use as fabric weights. So let's talk supplies. So number one, you need to have fabric. I will show you this right here was actually a fabric scrap from a shirt that I shortened. So I hemmed this shirt and I had this really cute flannel pattern um, fabric left over. So you can use fabric that you have um, from clothing maybe that's been altered or if you have maybe an item that you, you know, maybe it has holes and you wanna reuse it, this is a great way to reuse that scrap fabric as well. With these, I actually picked these up at the thrift store. So these are thrift store fabrics um, that I had some scraps left over. I am using really thick fabric. So one thing that you could optionally do if it's a really thin fabric, you could use more uh, like an interfacing. Again, that's a little more advanced. I did not use an interfacing with this. I just used the regular old fabric and it's gonna hold up just fine. Now, I also had um, a few different patterns here. So these are going to be eight by four and I have a little template since I'm making so many of them. Um, it's just gonna be eight by four. This actually is from the Dollar Tree. You can buy these in a two pack for a dollar. They are plastic cutting mats and I use them to make templates so that I can reuse them time and time again. So they work really, really well. Um, and that's what I use to cut these out. So that's the first supply you need is you need to have your eight by four fabric or about eight by four. It doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you have smaller scraps. You'll also need to have something if you want. This is again an optional, but I think this is a great thing to add. You'll need to have some form of ribbon. Um, in this case, I used a black piece here. This one is more of a clear piece. You can also use decorative ribbon. So if you have something for the holidays, maybe you want to use like a sparkly gold um, or maybe you just want to have like rainbow unicorns. Who knows? It's all up to you. Um, again, these are customizable. You can make them for whatever suits the person you're giving them to. Now you'll also need to have something to fill them with, as I mentioned. So I use rice because if I'm going to use my scent, my essential oil, um, rice works really well with this. Uh, it's also heavy. So if you're using them for your pattern weight, so if you have a sewist, um, in your life, someone that loves to sew and maybe they use a lot of patterns, this is a great gift. I would recommend making like three um, for them, at least three, usually three to five is uh, really great for fabric weights, um, but you will need to have them a little bit heavier so they don't move. So rice is a good choice there. But again, as I mentioned, you could just use fabric scraps. So I have my little fabric bin right here um, that you could just cut these up and fill them inside. Then you're gonna need to have some uh, some way to sew it. And in this case, this is just a regular old needle and thread with some, um, the color doesn't really matter because it is going to be hidden on the inside. You are gonna do a slip stitch um, to hide it, uh, but you will need this or your sewing machine. Actually, you'll need this anyway to finish the edge. Um, all right, so those are all the supplies you need. Now, if you want to do anything more advanced, you can use like a, a corner turner or a point turner to get those really sharp uh, corners. Uh, or you can even, like I used an embroidery thread as well to give it this nice little blanket stitch detail. But again, these are all up to you. So essentials, what you need, you need to at least have eight by four fabric and a needle and thread and something to fill it with. If you have that, that's the first step. So then what we're actually gonna do is we're going to take your fabric and you're gonna fold it right sides together. So you're just gonna fold it right sides together like that. 
and you're gonna do a little finger press. And what finger press does is without ironing it down, cause we don't wanna um, create a permanent crease right here. We're just gonna do this little crease right here. Uh, it just gives it a little bit of memory to the fabric. Now, because I am going to add ribbon, um, these are actually cut at about two and a half inches, but you can adjust whatever works for you. And then you're gonna put the sides together and then they are gonna go about right here. Um, so I'll show you where it's gonna go. On the inside of the fabric, you're gonna leave well, about a quarter inch right there. And then when you sew it together, you're gonna have it totally enclosed. So if you are hand stitching, all you need to do is do a running stitch all the way across here. And then also you'll turn and do a running stitch across here. You're gonna leave this side open, however, because you need to have this side open so that you can turn it and also to make the triangle shape. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stitch these together and uh, we'll go into the next step. Okay, so I stitched a few of these together. Uh, I went across and then across, and then like I said before, just leave one end open. Before we turn this right side out, however, we are gonna go through and we're gonna clip the edges. So you're gonna clip here and here. You do wanna make sure that you don't get too close to the stitching because you don't want it to unravel. You're just clipping close so that you can get a nice clean corner. Don't forget to keep those scraps. I keep all of those scraps. They go into my scrap bin because you can use them as stuffing. So now this is when we're gonna turn them right side out. You'll find that little ribbon, if you used one, will be right there near the edge. And then you can use anything, You can if you have anything laying around the house, don't use anything with a really sharp point though to get these um, because you don't wanna poke through the fabric. So these point turners are great, but you can use pretty much anything that you may have. Now, if you, oh, see, did you hear that? Did you see it? It just went through the fabric, but luckily it's not that noticeable, so we are okay. All right, so there's that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go through and do that for the rest of them. All right, now our next step. So you're gonna find that this is how we're gonna make the triangle. So let me show you that one more time. So you have your flat little piece right here, and then you're just gonna pull the sides like this to fill. Now, one other tip that I uh, will let you know that might be super helpful here, in fact, I should have done it already, um, is you wanna fold the edges under because you don't wanna have those raw edges. Now, you can fold this under here and do a little bit of a finger press. You can also, if you just pull the sides there, you'll notice that it'll fold under. You can take it over and press it as well, get a little bit of a press action there. Um, in fact, one little tip now that we're already this far in, you could actually press it before you sew it together um, on that end. So that is something that going forward, I'm going to remember to do, uh, but right now I'm just gonna go and press all of these and then come back for the next step. All right, so I have pressed all of the sides under, and then again, we're just going to pull it like this to create the triangle. And then you are um, eventually gonna wanna make sure that it's lined up. Right now, it's not so important because we are just going to fill this with your filling. Now, if you are just gonna put fabric in here, you can just shred that up into little pieces that are all um, similar size would be great. It doesn't really matter. You can also just use stuffing. So another use, if you have a sewist in your life, you could use um, just the fabric, or if you have polyfill, you can use that. Um, and you could make it a pin cushion. So there's a, again, there's a lot of different uses for this, but I am gonna use rice for this. Now, because there is such a big opening, it's not so necessary that you use, um, you know, something with a spout. However, um, it can make it a little bit faster for you and you probably already have one around your house. Now test it every once in a while. You don't want it to get too full or else you will not be able to close it up. Okay, so that is about right. We can still pinch it closed. It's pretty full. It's got a lot of weight to it. And uh, that is exactly what I'm looking for because this one is going to be a fabric weight. Uh, so then after you've done that and you filled all of them, 
The last step is going to be to hand stitch this closed along the edge. You can do this many different ways. There is a slip stitch that you can actually do a hidden stitch through. With this one right here, I actually did a slip stitch and then I went back and then I did a blanket stitch just to add more of that rustic feel to it. Um, again, really up to you to customize whatever you want. You could also add maybe another little detail like fringe or something here. It really, the possibilities are endless. All right, and one of the tips when you're doing a slip stitch, so I will show you bad slip, sti bad slip stitch and a good slip stitch. All right, this is one that I did a really long time ago. Um, here's why it's bad, a couple of reasons. Number one, you can see the stitches. You should not be able to see the stitches. Um, number two, look how much space is in there. Um, that rice is gonna start to fall out any any second um, and the stitches are too far apart. So when you're doing a little slip stitch like this, you want them close together uh, and you also want them hidden. So what that looks like, if I can pick up my needle, uh, so look how much already, how much better this one looks. You can barely even see it. You can't see the threads. And I am using a black thread, which again, since it's invisible, it doesn't really matter. But the trick to doing this, um, I know you want to do it fast because that's exactly what I would do in the past. I'd want to do really long stitches. When you do the long stitches, you get the puckering and it does not look very good. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to slip it just a bit, right? Just a little bit right there and then pull it forward. And then you're gonna tug it a little and you'll see that it pulls together. You're gonna do the same on the other side and you're doing this where that seam is. If you pressed it or finger pressed it, you should have a seam. So you're gonna do it again on the other side. You're gonna pull it and then once you tug on it a little bit, Look at that, it's like a perfect seam. Um, it does take a lot of practice to get this. I still have times where I'm in a hurry and um, it doesn't look the best, but you know, there's always blanket stitches. So I'm gonna keep doing this. So these are some examples of some of the finished items that I did. You'll notice I made a couple really small ones. All I did was uh, do a six by three instead of an eight by four. And I did add a few different styles of labels. These actually are my labels for my upcycled clothing on Etsy, but then just different, like look at this, isn't that super cute? So you can customize them to whatever you want. All of these fabrics here, were actually scraps and that's one of the coolest things. This one's stuffed with fabric scraps, the rest is rice. Um, so super easy project, inexpensive, and you can customize it for gifts or whatever you want. So if you do this project, tag me on social media, girly girl style. I'd uh, love to see what you are doing, like this content. If you did like this tutorial, also subscribe for future content. Until next time, everybody, see ya.